I'm Melanie Shaver, principal at Foothills Community School. I am Hank Hunt. Uh, apparently, I'm the voice guy. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about weather and convection, but I would like to introduce you to my friend, Admiral Robert Fitzroy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As I was just introduced, my name is Robert Fitzroy. I was an admiral in Her Majesty's Navy of Great Britain. I was born in 1805 to a very wealthy royal family. In fact, so wealthy, my great-grandfather was Sir Charles II himself. I was part of the Royal Naval College by the age of 12, and by the age of 14, I had sailed all the way around the world. I was the first Royal Naval officer in history to score a perfect 100 on his lieutenant's examination, or as you at FCS would say, a five. I only want to do it. In 1830, because of some incidents that occurred in South America, I became the captain of the HMS Beagle. And I finished off a surveying, equip, a surveying journey uh, over the coastline of South America. But it was not what I would call a fun job. It was very lonely being the captain. And so when I was put in, officially in charge of the ship, I decided that I needed someone to keep me company. And that someone is someone you may have heard of. His name was Charles Darwin. Now, Darwin and I got along very well together. And for five years, the two of us sailed around the world. We explored South America, the Galapagos Islands, uh, New Zealand, Australia. And during this time, he kept noticing things about birds and tortoises. And eventually he wrote a book that I have absolutely nothing to do with. But Darwin introduced me to the world of science. And so while we were touring the world, I began noticing the formations of mountains and beaches and rivers and was completely fascinated at how they came into being. Well, eventually I gave up my ship, the Beagle. Darwin goes and writes his famous books. And well, since I was part of royalty, they actually gave me the islands of New Zealand. I became the governor for several years. It was quite nice. But then I retired. And when I retired, I was put in charge of something that was called the Meteorological Status Board of Trade. Very fancy name, but basically I looked at numbers. And while looking at numbers, we were trying to figure out, well, how can we save sailors? Because men would get on those ships, they would go farm, they would go fishing, they would go off and explore, and the only thing they had to tell the weather were rocks and frogs. I wish I was making this up. If the rock was wet, it was raining. If the rock was white, it was snowing. If the rock disappeared, it meant the wind was blowing. It might be a tornado, you might need to run. They also used things like frogs and cows and horses. How were they going to predict the weather? Well, with the help of other members of uh, the elite society, such as Darwin and myself, we started taking a look at some of these new scientific inventions and we came across something called a barometer. And a barometer changes based on air pressure and we were able to create a system of buoys that would stay out in the ocean and that we would change the color of the buoys to let sailors know that we expected the weather to go bad or to be good. And this was all because of a short time period between 1855 and 1860 over 7,000 men lost their lives because of nothing, no way to predict the weather. In fact, one of my biggest claims to fame, and if you look me up online, what you'll see is that my name is synonymous with the word forecast. I came up with it myself to give those sailors a chance. And again, it was based on barometers and their ability to do, well, I don't know what they do. I will hand it over to Ms. Shaver. So he talks a lot about pressure and pressure is really driven by the circulation of air. Um, and so convection is really driven by the sun. So the sun heats up the air on land or over water. And when it does, that warm air rises and it's less dense because those molecules inside of there are moving around really fast and they spread out so that they can bounce off of each other. Like a sixth grader eating too much sugar. And so that forms a low pressure system. And that is very characteristic with changing weather. So when you have that, or, yeah, when you have that warm air, it then cools 
And when it cools, it sinks back down to the earth, becoming more dense. And you have a high pressure system, which is fairly stable weather. So convection is driven by warmer, less dense material rising and cooler, more dense material sinking under the influence of gravity. Convection is in the air. It's also in our oceans and in our mantle. So convection has a big impact on all of our systems on Earth. We're going to show you a little demonstration of some convection. So I have some convection fluid here, and you can see all of it kind of moving around and showing how it's how the fluid in there is going back and forth. And Mr. Hunt, or Admiral, has uh, lit a candle there. And so we're going to look and see how it warms up, and hopefully you'll be able to see that. And we'll move it a little closer if needed. So we'll give it just a minute to heat up. Oh, I can begin to see it from where I am. Can you? All right, so let's move it just a little there bit closer. Move it to the edge. And so you can see that some of this is coming up already. And if we move it closer here to the edge, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. And so as it comes up, the cooler material is now going down. So whenever you get back to school, be sure to ask Miss Shaver to see this, because from where I'm sitting, I can see the cool coming down on the back side and going down to both the front and the back of the bottle. So we can move it around right over here so you can see this. So if you notice, here's the currents coming through. You can begin to see the striations as they begin to sink and stop the way back. All right, so as your STEM challenge at home, let's see what you can make. Please post your pictures of your convection currents on our video. We would love to see it. Thanks, and have a great night. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's still recording. <laughs> okay.